Hi, in the last video we had a look at some metal clad PCBs from PCBWay for these Cree XHP50 LEDs. Now, I'm not actually utilizing these to their full extent. I'm only driving them about one amp, but you can actually drive them all the way to three amps if you can get them cool enough. And they are also a little bit expensive. And if you want to build one of these ring lights at home, this might not be the most cost effective option for you, given that we're not driving them at full power. So today we're going to have a look at some different LEDs. These are some Luxian Z LEDs. And to support that, we've got some new boards from PCB Way. So inside the box, uh, we've got some freebies, a ruler and a sticker. And then we've got the LEDs themselves. So the same form factor, but you can see the footprint is absolutely tiny. These Luxian Z LEDs are very small indeed. And we've also got a very slightly different footprint for the lens. Now also to support the smaller footprint, we've got a stencil here. And it's a little bit thinner than what you'd normally get. This is a 0.08 millimeter, millimeter stencil, so it's reflecting a little bit. Uh, but this is a much thinner stencil, so we don't apply quite so much paste to the PCB. Now, the reason why we might not want to do that is, first of all, it's an extremely small footprint, and we don't want any chance of solder bridging when it starts to melt. But also, we want the LED to sit very flush to the PCB material itself. So the minimum amount of solder paste that we can apply to the pads, the better. So we're going to have a try with this and... When you place your order at PCB Way, you are able to select various different thicknesses for the stencil material. So here on the PCB website, when you click on the instant quote, you can put all the details in for your PCB. But then when you go to the SMD stencil section, we've got a lot more options than you often have from some other suppliers. So you can have it with or without a framework if your stencil printer needs the framework that you can have that in. They've got a multi-level or stepped stencil, so a really interesting option there. And what that actually means is you can have a stepped stencil like this where most of the PCB is at the thicker geometry, so 0.12 millimeters or something like that. But then when you go down to your very fine pitch devices, so your BGA devices or um, TQFP packages if you need it, you can go down to a thinner section of stencil there and it allows you to deposit less solder paste onto those pads. So talking about that here, we've got the options for the thickness here. So standard is actually 0.12 millimeters for your general purpose PCBs. You can go all the way up to 0.3 millimeters if you want to deposit a lot of solder paste onto the PCB. Similarly, you can go all the way down to 0.08 millimeters, and that's particularly useful for BGA packages or very fine pitch devices where having too much paste on there would mean that the solder paste squidges out from the pads and potentially causes some problems during production. So a closer look at the PCB reveals the same high quality that we always expect from PCB Way. And this time we've gone for the white solder mask. and We've again got the immersion gold finish, as you can see here. And this means that even in a couple of years' time, if we want to solder up one of these boards, we shouldn't have any oxidization issues on the pad, so we can just solder it up nice and easy. Now, a few people had some questions after the last video about these aluminium PCBs and how we weren't getting better temperatures from these PCBs. So, first of all, let's have a quick look at the PCB stack up. So here is the stack up for these aluminium boards. So first of all, we've got a solder mask, which isn't shown on here. Then we've got our copper layer, which is what we actually solder our components to. Then there's an insulating dielectric layer, which provides the electrical isolation between the copper and the aluminium substrate. And then you've got the actual aluminium itself. Now there's various different options available. You can choose the weight of copper on here and you can choose the thickness of the aluminium. So we've gone for 1.6 millimeter overall thickness this time. The thermal conductivity, we've got two different options and I've selected the highest, which is two watts per meter Kelvin, which is an indication of the thermal conductivity. So this should give us the most thermal conductivity on our PCBs. And then we've got some of the other details about the aluminium PCBs here. So what that means for our LED PCBs is that between the copper pad that we're soldering our LED to and the aluminium which is then connected to our heatsink, 
we do actually have an insulating layer between those two to provide the electrical isolation. In our other design where we had some thermal vias directly on this pad and around the outside very slightly, we have got direct electrical contact between the heatsink pad and the copper vias and therefore we've got direct thermal conductivity direct to those vias and then off to the other side and on our other design we had our copper pad here which was electrically and thermally tied to those thermal vias and then off to the heatsink so it's not that surprising that we got very similar results between these two types of substrate material. The reason why we might want to choose one over the other probably mainly is around the type of circuit that you've got on here so where you need the electrical isolation this aluminium board is good because we've got that insulating layer and if we've got loads of different components all at different voltages and we just tie them into little copper sections then we can easily conduct that through to our aluminium substrate and then off to our heat sink if we need to and then it's a lot easier to deal with than having copper vias that could be at all different potentials on the other side of the board and then trying to tie those to various bits of heat sink. So that's why you might want to use these types of PCBs. So let's take a quick look at the LEDs. So previously we were using these Cree X-Lamp XHP 50.2 LEDs and these are very high light output devices. They've got four LED dies inside the package and you can either have those in a two by two configuration, so two in series with two in parallel, or all four in series. Now we're driving them in the 2x2 config, which means you could drive those LEDs at three amps in total, giving you well in excess of 1,500 lumens. But the downside to that, obviously, is we've got to get the heat out, and we've got to have quite a lot of heat sinking for that amount of power. Now today we're going to be testing these Luxian ZES LEDs. So a single LED die in this very small package, 1.6x2 millimeters instead of the 5x5 on the Cree LEDs, but these are still very high light output devices. And previously, I didn't select these because I was concerned that we wouldn't get enough light output from them, and also I wasn't able to get hold of any with a CRI of 90. Now, I was able to for this video. Unfortunately, they didn't have an option of the 5000 Kelvin, which is ideal for the microscope camera, but you've got various other options here. I've just opted for the 5700 Kelvin option for these that I've ordered today. And that gives us 215 lumens at 700 milliamps, which should still give us enough given how bright the other ones were and how little difference we saw across the brightness range previously. You can actually drive them at 1 amp and get 285 lumens out. In comparison, on the Cree XHP 50s, at 700 milliamps, which we've got here, you can actually get 495 lumens out of them, but we are driving twice as much power into that package because there's two LEDs in series, and each of the dies, bearing in mind that there's four dies in there, are running at a lower current individually, so they're actually running more efficiently, so you're able to get a little bit more brightness out of that package. So a quick look at the pricing, and the Cree LEDs are coming in at around £3.58 plus VAT each, so with four of those on the board, we're already getting up to close to £20 just for the four LEDs, and we're not getting the most value for money out of these because we're not driving them at those higher currents. In contrast, the Luxian Z is coming in at £1.87 each, so you get the four of these for just under £9, and if this gives us enough light output then this is quite a decent saving considering these are the most expensive parts on the PCB. Now I've also had to change the optics because the previous lens was unsuitable for the Luxian Z LED. So this one's quite a lot smaller, only 14 by 14 millimeters, but we've gone for the Veronica Square Mini M and it has various different options for the beam angle. So previously we went with a 60 degree beam they didn't actually have a 60 degree option, they had a 55 degree, but I thought we'd try out the 35 degree beam angle. What this will actually do is give us more light in a concentrated circle, so potentially we might actually get the same or more light in the smaller concentrated area, but we don't know yet whether the beam is going to be too small on our microscope, so that will be one test that we need to do at the end. So now let's get on and have a look at actually soldering up these LEDs. 
So here we have the LEDs themselves and they're absolutely tiny, about the same size as an 0805 resistor. But I just think it's amazing that you can get so much light output from such a small package. I recall the early 5mm white LEDs that were barely usable as indicators and you know I never really imagined that you could use LEDs for general illumination but these are absolutely amazing. Let's try and get them on the board and see just how bright they really are. So hopefully we've placed those okay. It was a little bit tricky to get them exactly in the centre of the pads and we really didn't want to have to move them. So I think it's only that one in the middle that's looking a little bit on the wonky side. Hopefully the surface tension of the solder will bring it back straight once it reflows. Right, let's see how we did. I've set the power supply to about 5 milliamps. Yep. Good. Right, I'll solder some leads on and we can try these out properly. So we've got three boards here with the XHP50 on the outsides and the Luxian Z in the middle. So this is the original with the 60 degree lens. I also got hold of some 13 degree lenses, so it'd be interesting to see what that looks like. And the Luxian Z has got that 35 degree lens on there. So what we're going to do is first of all have a look at what the beam looks like and then we'll set them up at 20 centimetres from the bench and measure the light level from each at the same current. So all of these are set up at 20 centimetres from the bench and they're actually just sitting at an angle so that they are pointing directly into the centre of the page here which is similar to what it's going to look like on the microscope. So this is the original 60 degree lens and you can see that gives us a nice soft edge but also very good even illumination around the center. Next up we've got the new Luxian Z LED with a 35 degree angle and you can see here that at the center of the beam, I'm aiming it just at the center here, it's about 15 centimeters from the edges of where the light starts to cut off. And then we've got the XHP50 with the 13 degree beam angle lens and it actually looks like quite a decent hot spot in the centre here but the actual fading off is quite gradual in comparison to the lens that we've got on the Luxian Z. So that one's measuring about 9, maybe 10 centimetres across in the centre there. Next I'll just go through and measure the light levels of each. Right, so I've tabulated up the data and if we have a look at the graphs we can see with that 13 degree lens on the XHP50, we can get a massive 145,000 lux at 1 amp, which is absolutely insane. That probably means with those lenses, if it looks okay under the microscope, we could actually drop right down in current and save ourselves quite a lot of trouble in terms of cooling. The Luxian Z with the 35 degree beam angle and the XHP50 with the 60 degree beam angle lenses are pretty much neck and neck in terms of light output at the centre of the hotspot. I've then just quickly plotted the power versus the current and then from that we're able to work out the lux per watt at the centre of the beam. So the XHP50 with the 13 degree beam angle obviously has the highest amount of lux per watt. That's at a height of 200 millimetres and we just see a slight decline as the LED becomes less efficient with more current. Similar story for the one with the 60, 60 degree beam angle, so similar decline as we would expect. Interestingly the Luxian Z with the 35 degree beam angle is starting to increase and peaks at about 750 milliamp and then starts to drop off slightly there but we are getting more light in the centre of the beam per watt that we're putting in. So finally we'll just look at what these look like under the microscope. Bearing in mind this is just one single LED. This is the XHP50 with the 60 degree angle lens and we're driving it at 700 milliamps and this is with the microscope zoomed all the way out. So this is the Luxian Z with the 35 degree lens on it and it doesn't look too bad at all. We're just starting to get a very slight amount of darkening just towards the edges but not too bad with the microscope zoomed all the way out. 
Finally, the XHP50 with the 13 degree lens, and it looks pretty similar in terms of just the slight amount of darkening towards the edge of the image. So here we are at maximum zoom now with the XHP50 at 750 milliamps, and this is with the 60 degree angle lens, and we're just starting to see some graininess, but obviously no issue with darkening towards the edge of the image. Then we've got the Lutz Z with the 35 degree lens, and again, no darkening towards the edge of the image. Then finally, the XHP50 with the 13 degree beam angle lens, and again, no darkening at the edge of the image, but quite a lot brighter. So quite a lot of information there, but basically what it all boils down to is these Luxian Z LEDs, despite having a slightly lower light output, by changing the optics to something where less light is wasted outside of the usable area on the microscope, we're actually getting the, about the same amount of light in the center there. So this is quite a viable solution and should save quite a bit of money. And the other nice thing is that if we were to revisit the design, because it's a single LED in one of these chips rather than four LEDs, we could actually design the whole thing with just one single LED driver and decrease the size of that main PCB quite a lot. Now, also in terms of cost savings, these heat sinks turned out to be quite expensive. I had them left over from another project, but it turns out they're actually about £3.50 each, which again is another expense. I've been ordering a few different types of heat sinks off eBay. These ones are looking pretty promising, but I've still got some more to arrive, so I'll report back once I know which one's the best to use, but these ones are actually a little bit bigger, um, other than they are more square rather than that rectangle shape, but they're taller, so I should be able to dissipate, you know, the heat a little bit better. And these are only about a pound each, so not too bad for those, but I'll give some more information on those at a later date. Now, in terms of other things, I have been working on the chassis design slightly. This was one design printed flat onto the 3D printer bed, and this only took about two hours to print. And I made these little things to hold the LED board. So the plan is that sort of the LED board goes through. It won't quite fit at the moment because you can feed the wires through the hole here. But you feed the LED lens through the hole. And then this back piece then goes over the PCB. And then some screw holes for some self-tapping screws. And that just holds this whole assembly together. So basically you end up with an LED in a little 3D printed bit like this. And then this can be mounted into the caseworks and you can change the angle of the beam on each of these with just with uh, some little screws here that we can tighten up. Now, the main problem with this one is obviously it looks quite angular, just being printed flat to the bed. And this one has literally just finished printed. I've just taken it off the bed now. It's got more of a chamfered edge, although I had to print some support structures to support that. But this one's pretty much there. You can see where it's just starting to uh, convex in towards the edge there. But we're getting there with this. So hopefully you found the video useful. Maybe you'll find your own application for some of these tiny Luxian Z LEDs. It's just amazing the amount of light that you can get out from such a tiny footprint. Also, a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you, I wouldn't be able to buy all of these parts to do these projects. Also, a big thank you to PCBWay for providing these PCBs for this project. So don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some of these metal clad PCBs made. But until next time, thanks for watching.